The Ashra Temple, the first Ashra Temple was for me not really a record production. I wanted to have it uh, as much as possible as a, as, a, as a kind of document that we, that it's uh, as much as possible uh, in the way that we performed because we were a live band and our real, I think our strengths and, and our uh, the real power that we had and that we could show was our live performances and so I just wanted to, sh to, to bring this as much as possible on this record. So I didn't like to have too much uh, technical experiments with multi-tracks and overdubs and um, so I wanted to have it as rough as possible. And we found it took a while because we, we made some test recordings and they were terrible because the engineers didn't understand it at all. The one engineer just went out from the studio because he thought he didn't have to care about it. <laughs> but I think it's very good, uh, you can hear it very good on the first Ashra Tempe. So this is, this was a good start for <laughs> Basically, we had the idea <coughs> to make, uh, or the first idea was to make um, a record with Allen Ginsberg, uh, of whom we had a poem in the cover sleeve of our first album. But he was, uh, nobody knew where he was, he was not to find, and so. It, uh, and suddenly we found out that Timothy Leary was in Switzerland and he was really a good psychologist uh, because um, that's what I found. Yes, he could talk with everybody and he could bring people very good together and that's really a, I think he was, as a psychologist, he was a good, he had a good talent uh, to work with people. So he brought us all good together and finally we recorded and yeah, it was fun. Maybe musically it's a bit, I don't know, you can, uh, but it doesn't matter, it's, a, it's just a document, I think. Yeah, that, I mean, I'm very proud that it happened. I had to find my own way for solo and for composition going to, to, make, to, to make my own interpretation of music. Before I worked, in the context of a band, it was Ashra Temple, and basically it was, Ashra Temple was basically also my friendship and my partner, Hartmut Enke, and he left in 73, and I tried a little bit different. Uh, I, I was a bit looking around in, what, in which direction I would continue. I would have loved to continue with the band. I tried to find uh, more other musicians, that was fine, but I didn't feel it was the same energy and, and like, like the original version. So, and sometimes it's better you stop something and don't try to keep it alive somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like that. So finally I, I thought I have to make something on my own. And so I just did the, the very, the most simple thing that I could do. I, I said, okay, what I am, I can play guitar, I know my electric guitar, and uh, so I used that, how to make a record just with one electric guitar, then this is what I, what I said before, uh, my influence from the minimalism that I was began to listen to, to Terry Riley, for example, and I thought, whoops, he's playing intelligent on his organ with just a delay, and it makes a fantastic sound. So why not trying to make something with electric guitar, delays, sounds with guitar? But on the other hand, I wanted to really start going into composition, so I gave it a structure from the beginning, so I, I decided how to make it. It's not only um, invention, it's not an improv, it's, it's an improvisation in parts, but basically it's more a composition. Yeah. So I really decided I make one piece about 20 minutes, I use one guitar for this part, and then I make a second one, a third one, a fourth one, with overdubs, yeah. so I didn't of course, I couldn't play it at the same time. So. 
or maybe not so consequent in this way. And I was very happy that uh, three years ago I had a chance to perform it in the original version with uh, Steve Hillage here from London, an old friend with whom I ever wanted to play. It never, never happened. New Age of Earth was the next step after Inventions uh, that I started composing for keys. One thing is starting from composing for the keys. Still my influence with uh, minimalism, which from more from Steve Reich maybe, which I like very much. Steve Reich I like because of his rhythmic, uh, he has a good feeling for rhythm, yeah, I like, I like that. Steve Reich studied rhythms in, in Africa and you hear that in music. And uh, there's also a little old-fashioned blues influence. Uh, uh, the second piece is a little reminiscent to, to Peter Green's Albatross, but in an electronic way. And, uh, I think it was another big step towards my development in composing, as a composer. You know. There's only little guitar on the album, only on two parts. Instead, I played on the next album, on Blackouts, I played again more guitars, <laughs> so I switched again. Uh, and New Age, by the way, is, has nothing to do with New Age, because um, this is just a very simple translation from the German. The German title was Neuzeit, which means New Era or something like this. And for me, it was a kind of step forward, a new era. And I translated New Age, yeah. I didn't know anything about New Age. And New Age music at that time was not yet existing. There was a New Age movement in philosophy uh, in the 60s, but it has nothing to do with music. And New Age music developed later. So. I tried to bring in some steps of, of the development in music, like sampling and, and computer programming. And this was 88, so it was still with the Atari and, and MIDI things. And a technology was very, which was very uh, static. And I always find it a bit boring because I'm what I said before, I'm a live musician and everything has to be more or less live. And if I, uh, in the 80s, the problem was that you had interesting facilities with MIDI and computers, but you couldn't use it live. You could not play live with it. You could use it in a studio, you can type in your notes and then you have everything is fine, but then you want to change something and you have to stop and you listen again. And, so it's very soon you lose any, any feeling for the music yeah, because it gets really too mathematically mathematical or I don't know. And that's, that's a great advantage of today's programs. You can just play and try and, and it doesn't stop and it works and so programs are stable. <laughs> so it's still fun in a way, yeah, I mean, you have to... <clears throat> the biggest problem for, for music or for composing music is that you have a structure or that you have a, what you have in films, in, 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 a, in, a, in a dramaturgy in a way, yeah, that you have a start and it goes up and then uh, something happens and then it goes down. And the same has to happen in music and this is very difficult if you always stop and write something and then again and so you, this is when you, when you play, and when you play, you have a feeling for the time, for the timing. Uh, then you say, boom, 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 now something has to come, something you have to change, otherwise it gets boring, or not, and you can leave it for a while, you can leave a rest, and, uh, not very much is happening. So you have to get this line into a, a composition yeah? and it doesn't matter if it's if it's dance music or if it's classic or if it's uh, jazz or whatever yeah? it has to be 
it has to attract a listener that he listens to it and that he follows your ideas. Yeah.